reassuring to know that I can come down here in the evening and express um, my thoughts, opinions, and concerns, and that you'll be receptive and listen. So I wanted to thank you all for that as well. It's very much appreciated. And I and can't speak for others, but that sentiment is out there in the community, and I think you should know that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and I guess with that, you know, what I probably don't have to share with you is that <coughs> It doesn't seem like outside of this room, too many people who have a vested interest in public education, our legislators, our governor, our regents, have been listening. Um, and I know we got dealt a pretty lousy hand with the education budget this year uh, in terms of the changes to the law and the budget itself didn't do what it needed to do after years and years and years of underfunding. Um, but I think the thing that we're most concerned with here tonight is our kids. And so, um, I'd like to share with you the letter that we're going to um, share with Dr. Butcher for uh, Ken Finn, who's in kindergarten, uh, Jack, who's in second grade right now, who next year will be in first and third grade. And yeah, I don't know what's that? No, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're going to end up there. So I can just share this over here. Um, and we hope that the, the letter is received by everybody in the, um, in the spirit that it was written, and that is in a spirit of support. So it is a refusal letter for our kids for anything that is used for teacher evaluation, um, whether it be a state assessment in third grade or a locally uh, bargaining or procurement assessment in, um, in first grade. And like I said, we want it to be received in a in word of support, which is why we came down here today, um, so that you knew that we're we just because parents can't see a way that that's healthy for our kids, that it's healthy for their teachers, and that it's going to be positive for our students. Um, it's not something that we really wished to, to do, obviously. Um, we did not write the letter without thought and consideration. Um, it's certainly not fun to have to think about first graders, though, being responsible for 50% of the teachers' evaluations for so much on the line. Um, we don't feel that that's our child's place to, to do that, and as a parent, I am most disappointed in the education reform that states that my child's interaction with the teacher, my interaction with the teacher, uh, daily work and lesson plans cannot be used to evaluate the effectiveness of the educators in the Parker. As a parent, I'm, I'm really, really concerned that it's simply come down to, uh, to test scores and a couple of observations. Um, to me, what's most meaningful is that I, you know, like I expressed, I can come down here, I can speak with the teacher, they respond to emails and phone calls, Dr. Foot is available. It concerns me that those things that are so important to me as a parent have been completely shuffled aside and the focus is so much on test scores, and especially in the lower grades. It pains me to have to write a refusal letter for today. I just think that that's ridiculous, but at the same time, we feel that that's what we need to do in order to continue to express our concern with the direction we're heading. We realize too that you are uh, the in-between. And so like Jamie said, um, our purpose here tonight is to kind of just keep you informed um, of where we are as parents so that you maybe better understand our actions. And should you have any questions, let you know that we'd always be glad to, to discuss our viewpoints or answer questions you might have regarding our refusal letter. Well, I want to thank you 
you guys, you know, for uh, all that you've done for the district. And, you know, I, I'll certainly take the opportunity to read it after the meeting. Uh, and, and I think, I'm not sure, and you don't know what the desk is going to settle with all these evaluations. We have the new commissioner, and so uh, I think the board's hope, just like yours, is that what comes out the other end of the process is something that is a little bit more uh, logical. There are a lot of unknowns even in that letter. Um, it might even seem overwhelming because there are so many unknowns. Um, we tried to pen the letter so that it was comprehensive. Um, but in, once we do have more answers as far as what will be acceptable to be used for the evaluation system, we can certainly follow up with another letter to be more specific. And sure. so we, you know, we do understand that um, maybe we're a bit ahead of things, but unfortunately, um, we know a lot is going to happen very quickly in the summer months. Um, when no one's paying attention. When, exactly. <laughs> um, and so we wanted to take the opportunity now to let you know that um, you know we would be refusing to participate in assessments type of teacher evaluation. Well, and I appreciate the courtesy of uh, sharing the letter with us. It's fun. Yep. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's my pleasure to serve on the, uh, on the Public Relations Committee with our chairperson, uh, Ms. Phillips. And uh, and uh, just just FYI, kind of an update. You know, we, we mentioned at the last meeting as well. But Mr. Hyde and uh, the committee are doing a lot to try to keep on top of it, like you guys are. You know, with all the unknowns. And our goal is to finally get something solidified after decisions are made in Albany uh, that we can get some good information out to the parents regarding how it affects their students, how it affects the teachers, how it affects the schools. So, so we're still trying to keep an eye on it too, guys. So appreciate it. And, and likewise, um, we want to support all of you in your role. And so if there's something that we can do as parents to support the school board in advocating for our public schools and for the teachers that serve our students, we're always glad to do that as well. Um, it, it, many, it's going to take a lot of different actions and efforts and some teamwork. So. And I think we are fortunate to have a community that supports the school. You know, and I think that's not true everywhere, but it absolutely is true. I guess the only thing I'll share with that in mind is that um, if you want to put the date in your calendar, read your postcards and have a public forum, probably at Proctor, on the first day, June 23rd. Um, it's the day of the sixth grade graduation here, but I guess you take them when you can get them. What time, June? Uh, sometime between 5.30 and 7.30. So details are still so sketchy at this point, but as I have those available, um, if you're able to attend and you want to talk to guy who picked the new commissioner, he'll be there. Right. And we're hopeful that the new commissioner, she's expressed that she'd like to go on a listening tour and, and talk with parents. Um, so, you know, we welcome the opportunity to meet with her as well. So. Right. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks so much for your time. Sure. And you obviously know a lot more about it than I know. Okay. But I'm thinking in broad terms. And Alan, you may have to do research on this because there are a lot, a lot of unknowns. Jackson second grade? Jackson second grade. Or being third grade. Yeah. If every parent in Jack's third grade class next year turns in a letter, what happens to that teacher? I mean, I, and that was coming this year too. I, I know. And well, these are things that we don't these are the unknowns. In a letter. That's an unknown right now, right. but but what they've stated though, what they've stated is is that there has to be a secondary backup plan for evaluation. By by December no, that's no, that's the EPPI. Right. Um, you were required, the state is requiring us, they require every teacher to have a complete evaluation. So with that, what they are requiring us to do is to write an SLO, and they're calling it like a, an emergency SLO or a backup SLO, SLO, SLO student learning, learning objectives. objectives. And to base this, your student growth on that SLO. But don't we have to have a new APPR in place by a certain date? That, that's for next. What you're saying is that's for next year, the new APPR. What's the date? Well, it's, we're, we don't know yet because there's legislation right now <laughs> that's that for It looks like they want to push it out a year. They're trying to push that out a year. It was set for June. It was set for something. It was set for where we would get it from uh, the state education department by June 30th. It would be due to the state of, we would have it due back to regions by September 1st for approval by November 15th. 
And you're talking that would be 700, roughly 700 school districts that would have to do that. And but them in they're trying to get that moved out a right. year. It did pass the assembly. I believe it's coming before the Senate. And I know they go on recess after June 17th. So we're hoping. And that's for 2015, 2016. Right. <coughs> so I, mean, I don't think we want to waste a lot of energy on things until we know what hoops we have to jump through. Right. Well, I mean, but I think part of the problem, though, is that you can't even wait to know the hoops yeah. because the hoops, the hoops have been in flux essentially the entire year right. between the changes on the legislative side and also the changes even on the in SED. What they've asked, I mean, if we didn't get ahead of it two years ago, we had an HVR, we all agreed to that, we're like, okay, we're good, and then it changed. And then this year it changed, and then before it even changed, it changed again. And then they just appointed a new commissioner who says she's committed, but she wants to listen to what everybody has to say. I have no idea what she's, I can't see how she could do both of those things. They seem so forward and kind of incompatible. But again, also, you know, the Senate leadership keeps changing. Right. But if you know, it'll get started by, and then September 1st doesn't change, but get started again. Yeah. what? But yeah, but SED has But we have, we have sent in our public comments, right? I have I thought we the board resolution meeting. Yeah, yeah, so so that was yeah. kind of like a board. That was, the, the, that was for that field was testing. Mm. What's that for field testing? Because public testing. comment is open right now regarding the APPRs, right? I believe you can still submit public comment to the there's a, um, an email address and you'll get a canned response. Yeah. yeah, I sent one in individually, um, you know, from a parent perspective, and I don't know if the board wants to do something like that. Um, you know, I mean, advocacy to me is different than nuts and bolts trying to comply with something. And I just don't want to see the administration wasting time trying to comply with something right. that we don't know what they're, you know, it's right. so, shifts. So. Well, but in the interim period, there's, what I'm trying to, trying to point out is that there's still opportunity for comment, you know, and if we want to continue our, our positions, then there's still opportunities to get those in. I think it's definitely worth making comment. Whether, whether they hear it or not. Yeah, I mean, if it helps this group, no. Um, I actually had a small group meet with Regent Botar, Anthony Brindisi, and Joe Grippo last Thursday. And um, I kind of chided Anthony and Joe a little bit about an extension. There's not going to be an extension. If I, if I have as a gambling man, I tell you, September 1 is going to be your deadline. Now, there is language for hardship extensions. And so you might want to, as a board, consider what qualifies as a hardship yeah, extension help. because, um, um, you know, With our there's so many unknown circumstances that it's always a hardship. You know, I, I, I would maybe, just say maybe there everybody's in a really tough spot. Kind of take it up and see if we can possibly do something for a public comment regarding the, the, the process and make sure we're taking everything. I'm not sure what we're commenting because the the legislation. Right, but the legislation, we haven't seen the new legislation. Well, it's right? not commenting on the new legislation, right. it's legislation. commenting on the current legislation. It's but there's new legislation no, there's coming new. out. There's well, modifying legislation. Well, then, and right. that's the but public that's comment. Right, but then, being, right. but so then wouldn't there be a public comment period on the new legislation that's being issued before it's adopted? I guess that's what I'm... I think well, they're reading those comments. Right. Yeah, I believe I if they seat, stick to the dates, I believe that that is going to be it for us. And I, I would tell you, plan on September 1. If I, had, if I was a gambling man, I'd tell you, they'll have to have it in by September 1, and they'll have to have it approved by November 15. Jamie, Unless you can apply for a hardship. I have a question for you. In that meeting, was there any discussion about, um, they were talking about exclusions for high-performing districts. Was there any discussion about that? No. So there there was the new Senate chair for the Education Committee um, actually floated a bill to say high performing districts could be out, it went nowhere. And there's no way. There's yeah. no way that the governor is letting anybody out for. Well, and wouldn't we just as a time matter, we have the APPR that everybody agreed to. And so now they've made changes to the rules. So wouldn't we obviously use the APPR that we have today as the base and just tweak it to that would be the best case scenario. I Plus the say. SLOs. Right, right. I know that sounds a lot simpler than I'm sure it is, mm -hmm. but I would think it's easier than the first time through when we were starting from scratch to create it. 
Who still wants to be negotiated? I'll say my take is you're, there's almost nothing left to negotiate. You're still asking every teacher now to be evaluated on one test. Well, but, but again, I, I don't want to belabor the point. But what would happen if the rule says you have to do A, B, and C, and we put A, B, and C in the APPR, and the union says no? Well, well, it's legislated. Then you've, you've, got, then you've got a hardship. Well, we got a hardship. <laughs> but can the union say no to a law? Unless they see our state meeting. Right. Unless they put in some type of license outside. Okay. So just so so up, we don't know a lot. Yeah, let's well, go ahead and hardship and qualify as a And there's no way the state's going to approve all those plans between September 1 and November. They can't even read all those plans. It takes them six months to approve plans on the side of yeah, it takes how many years for us to get our capital plans? But those are right. laws. There's a new commissioner in place. A lot of different All right. Personally, I want to see how much latitude we can negotiate. Hang on tight. It's going to be a wild ride. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I will excuse <laughs> Sport Ever King. Well, excuse very, yourself. Very good. John, I've got to bring up one thing. I think I speak for everybody here. I want to congratulate Beth on her re-election to the board. Oh, yes. yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I like, should I congratulate you or congratulate you? <laughs> no, I look forward to it. Uh, anyone else in the peanut gallery? Anyone? No? Okay. Approval mm, of this. Regular meeting, May 18, 2015. Yeah, there's something omitted on the correspondence and communication. Uh, Mr. Jadhan brought up a letter that he had received, discussed it uh, with the board, and also noted that Mr. Knoll was going to make sure that, uh, that we were in compliance with the open meetings law. Communications. Yes, I have invitations from New Harper Senior High School for their sophomore and junior awards ceremony on Thursday, June 11th, uh, from 7 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. in the gym. Let me just get this tuned out for the rest of the personal so I'll pass those out. And also I have that chart for you all to sign up that, and I guess you've already completed. So this is a white group. In advanced groups, they already been struggling. So if I could get that so we can ensure that we have coverage of that yeah. award ceremony. And this is one of those special times of year that all the awards. So thank you for attending mm -hmm. this. And that concludes the correspondence and communications on my hand. Okay. Six, board committee report, audit committee, May 28, 2015. The audit committee met on May 28th. Um, Mrs. Mandel distributed the agenda received mm -hmm. from um, Ms. Nelson of Dermody Bourbon Brown regarding the independent auditors scheduled to complete the audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015. Ms. Nelson reviewed the audit objectives, audit approach, new GASB standards, and field questions from the committee. Field work will begin on June 22nd of this year with final field work scheduled for the week of August 10th. The independent audit will be presented and reviewed at the Budget and Finance Committee meeting in October. Um, Ms. Nelson then excused school administrators from the meeting to inquire of the committee if 
we had any concerns that they may have as they plan their audit, which we did not have any concerns. Um, Mrs. Mabel then reviewed the BOCES Plus R3 intermunicipal agreement with the committee. The internal audit is a mandated service from the New York State Comptroller's Office. The committee recommended that the district continue participation with Quest R3 BOCES for the service for the 2015-16 school year. The agreement will be presented to the Board of Education for approval at their July 2015 meeting. And finally, Ms. Mandel indicated that a request for proposal for independent audit services will be prepared and mailed in the fall of 2015. This will be reviewed again with the committee at that time. We adjourned at 3.55. Budget of Finance, May 28, 2015. Yes. Um, on the Audit Committee meeting, we had a Budget and Finance Committee meeting. Um, the third quarter financial reports and budget transfers were reviewed by the committee, and they'll, they're going to be presented at our Board of Education meeting tonight. The expenditure projections through June 30th are anticipated to be below appropriations as a result of cost containment measures that this district is undertaking to control expenses. Revenue projections are above budget as a result of higher than anticipated postseason aid and pilot revenue. That's good stuff. Fund balance projection for the current year was reviewed. Ms. Um, Mandel reviewed the efficiency plan items that were submitted to the Department of Budget as part of the 11 School District Consortium Government Efficiency Plan. And Mrs. Mandel stated that the 2014-15 goals associated with this committee have been met and will be finalized over the next few weeks. Uh, next few weeks, excuse me. Um, we also reviewed two items that were raised at the end of the previous board, some uh, past Board of Education meetings. It was mentioned at the April 7th Board of Education meeting that the information provided last year during budget presentations regarding the estimated change in taxes on a home assessed at $100,000 with the basic star exemption was believed to be incorrect. Using specific example provided during the budget presentations last year, the estimated increase on a $100,000 home was $41. Therefore, if a home with the basic star exemption is assessed at $181,500,000, the increase would have been $74,000 when applying the following calculation. $41 times 1.815 equals $74. This $74 is also the amount of increase that was confirmed by comparing the actual tax bill totals for 2013 and 2014 on this house. Therefore, the estimated $41 was correct. It was mentioned at last uh, May 18th Board of Education meeting that the tax report provided in the district newsletter required board approval. The report that is provided in that publication is the budget notice and does not require board approval. Ms. Mandel stated that similar to this year, next year she will review the property tax cap, property tax report card and budget notice with the Budget and Finance Committee. In addition, the report due in April to the State Education Department, the property tax report card, in the future will be added to the budget resolution in April. Um, there will be an addendum, I think it's presented tonight, to ratify and approve the 2015-16 property tax report card. And we adjourn that. I have a couple questions, uh, Ms. Philipson. Sure. Uh, what house uh, was used for the uh, calculation and the board meeting following? Uh, we actually used your house, Ed, because you were the one that brought it up at the meeting. I see. So did you use anybody else's house for the $28 uh, enhanced start to figure that out? This specific example was your house? Oh, no, I did not. You did not. No. Did. Are you representing this as a statistical analysis of of uh, the uh, tax increase? No, nope. last year. When no, you're, you're, so you're representing this as my home, okay. and so and, and we didn't do the twenty-eight dollar one, and you're using my house now. The reason why I bring this up is because should my home, because I ask questions here, should my home be affronted with uh, some type of tax increase? I wanted this on tape in order that everybody knows that for some cute reason, it was determined that my home would be used for this calculation. It wasn't and, a cute reason. And, you said it. And, did you know whose house they were going to use, Lisa, before it was done? You you brought up that you I, had a your hang tax, hang tax bill. Hang on. Hang on. If you're representing this as an analysis of one home, it's flawed. If you're representing this as an analysis 
of everything that was said at that meeting regarding tax increases, it's flawed. And so there can be no other purpose other than to be cute and use Flemeth's home alone for some type of evaluation to the school. That, that, that's, that's it. So number two. Wait, can did, you back up for a second? Yeah. You mentioned in the board meeting that your tax bill, you felt, wasn't, didn't follow the formula that she presented. And if I said to Mary, Mary, my tax bill did not follow the formula she presented, I would expect her to look at my tax bill and go, geez, I, I can't imagine that it did or it didn't. And it turns out that you were mistaken and it didn't. It was also a general statement. If you go back and look at the video, it was also a general statement. You said a bunch of people came to you and said their tax bills didn't matter? Yeah, I did. Absolutely. But it's, it's, in, it's, in, it's in that video. Uh, and so I just, okay, I, that's fine. I'm just saying that this is not a statistical analysis, that it wasn't done. Well, neither was your single well, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Because I, I believe the spirit with which this was conducted was to try to answer a specific question. I don't think the board ever, ever came and said, we as a board feel the calculation is incorrect and we need to conduct a statistical analysis. Uh, and if the board feels that way, we can certainly go about it. But I don't, I don't feel like that was the intent. All right. Well, I, I, we're going to find out what the intent was. But let's let's go back. Let's go back to number two. Was there any discussion in this meeting regarding the illegal uh, against New York State education law submittal of the property tax report card to the state? Was there any discussion about that? That was the specific issue that I raised at the last meeting. I provided everybody all the links, and I did not see not one word in this report until I continued to pursue it. Now we have an addendum, but this committee took no action whatsoever regarding us not following New York State education law. Is that correct? Well, one, I, I, I No, John, I'm asking the committee, I'm sorry. I'm asking the chairman of the committee on her report. We are moving forward, we discussed it, and moving forward, Mary called SED, and she was told that the person at SED, and you can speak, Mary, didn't wasn't even aware of the statute. They needed to get back to me. Okay, well, to, I, I... To tell me about what, um, what the specific statute is, and said, you know, in their opinion, it was an oversight, why don't we just move it forward, right. which is exactly what, what um, we decided, decided to do. determined to do, moving forward, correct it. So, we had agreed, and thank you for bringing it to our attention, that the property tax report card wasn't specifically approved formally, that document. However, we had substantively reviewed all of the information with budget and finance at the February 11th meeting, the March 4th meeting, the March 11th or March 18th meeting, including a PowerPoint presentation of the materials that was included in the property tax report card. This, this property tax report card, I have never seen. Specifically, the property tax report card form itself, substantively, I said all of the information that was included was reviewed at, reviewed at three budget and finance committee meetings, one of which was um, had the entire Board of Education present. The information included in that was also um, all of the property tax cap information, obviously, as you know, the revenue increase, the budget increase, that information was all also reviewed at the budget hearing. Um, so. All of the information was reviewed. The um, the actual form itself was submitted to the state education. That department. should have been approved by it the board. Was, I agree. So it was approved. I mean, it was submitted. It was in all of the board in all of the packets, the budget packets that were sent out to all of, all of the other other items specifically listed and in. in statute, if you will, were all complied with. It was at the public library. It was everywhere. It was I, I didn't ask so, about that. So I asked about that. Let's finish. Provided. Well, the actual well, document itself, you are correct, was not approved by the Board of Education at the April uh, when the board, when the budget was approved. So, so, thank so you I, I guess, I guess. I called the State Education Department. Yeah. I self-disclosed. Um, I wasn't when looking to hide right? anything. When did so we call? I spoke, finally spoke with somebody yesterday that yes. back to me. Somebody so back was not to her hiding yesterday. anything. Um, obviously, it was fully right. disclosed. The document was provided to the public multiple ways. It was, it was even mailed to the OD. So 
Um, the State Education Department, again, as I said, got back to me after they looked at the statute and said, you know what, if you, um, I understand that the, the, the nature of the law was to provide the disclosure to the public, um, so if we feel that, if the board feels that we want to do that, then just simply bring it to this Board of Education meeting, um, because I did tell them that we had a Board of Education meeting tonight, and said, yeah, just bring it to the Board of Education meeting. It was an oversight on your part. You're admitting it to it. It's not like am I trying to hide anything. Um, and just have the board approve approve the property tax report. Okay. It's already on our list for next year. Um, so in all of our calendars, we have specific detailed checklists that we do follow. In, um, in none of the reports or none of the emails that I tried to get information on, did any of what you just said, did anybody ever say we should have approved it? It was all kind of this, but in any event, I contacted, I contacted, I contacted, I contacted NYSED as well, just mm -hmm. to inquire, and I contacted the New York State Education Management Department, mm -hmm. the okay. one that, the, the one that manages this, and Mr. Steve McNally, and I, and I asked him, you know, what the deal was um, regarding this thing, and did it have to be approved? He said yes. Um, he also said that if it's not approved and submitted, that it's a real problem, that in fact, there are Case, there are cases where the commissioner has excoriated school systems for not doing that, and that the commissioner can, in fact, relieve the entire board. Okay, so 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 I'm just I'm just I'm just I'm just saying. Well, I, you know, I contacted. Well, he, he told me that. He told me to look into it because he didn't believe that the board had to have that the board even needed to. Well, he met, well he must have found that a lot because when I talked to him today, and I guess I guess I guess Mr. Chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee, what I'm what I'm what I'm looking at, what 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 I, you know, I not once did a straight answer come until just now. Well, this is the time to make Well, no, the time would have been in your report. The time would have been on the emails when, you know, we don't want any surprises, and I'm trying. I'm trying. And nothing comes straight. And so she I've got to continue. So I've got to continue to ask. I've got to continue to prod in order to get an answer. And so uh, that's, that's my problem. Secondly, did, did we tell them that we have never done it? That we've never done it. I told him that it was not. It was. It was specifically reviewed. All of the information was reviewed, and we were under the impression that this information, all of the information, was disclosed at multiple meetings, not only with the full board of education, but our, our subcommittee as well. And again, as I said, he had to check into, and he's the person. To call well, when I called him today, he must have known because, because he was him not. Uh, and told him about it. Yeah, I, I talked why. to him today, and he was adamant that this is. Uh, he, he asked me, "Do you have a problem?" I said, "No, we're 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 having a meeting tonight, and everything else." But at the end of the day, he said, "Hey, here's the deal. Here's what could happen if, in fact, you've done that." I have a quote from him. It was a simple oversight. Okay, right. great. Simple oversight. Good. And that because this was publicly disclosed, which was the nature of the statute, not that it was okay, but he said it's after the fact, moving forward, correct it. Was this ever publicly disclosed? He, yes. The property tax right. report card yes. was multiply, in Budget multiple times. places. Sounds it was mailed buildings. to the OD, every school building, the public Why library. It was never in a budget meeting. It was never at the budget hearing. It was at the budget hearing. This this entire this thing. This entire the whole thing was at the budget. Okay. And it was in every well, single. I saw the other one that had the subjective that had the main you saw points the out. Of. The budget notice, which has many of the okay. similar information. That's what I responded to your question okay. at the last board meeting because you said the notice that was in the newsletter. The notice that was in the newsletter. And you did say property tax report card, but Ed, there are so many documents. During budget time, that I just figured you simply well, there's only okay. really three. I mean, that need to be submitted in a timely fashion. And so, and so, listen, I, that's great. That's, so that's great. But I guess my notice that was in the newsletter. Yeah. So I did answer you correctly. That did not require board approval. So no, yeah. I said the property tax. In the newsletter. Well, so, so, so I thank you for bringing it to my attention. What's on this document is the budget increase being 1.9 percent. Tax levy increase being 2.7 percent. That were within the two-thirds majority, or the super majority vote, and the eight-seven majority. 
in the fund balance calculations, which are audited and accepted by the board. So there's nothing in this document that has been right. But But that's not the document. That no, that's not the document. Right? That is the document. No, this is the document. This is the 2015-2016 tax, tax uh, property tax report card right here. That is exactly the document. No, it's not. This is the document that's printed right from the state education. Yeah, well, th I, this is it. There might be another format of this. This is yeah. the but, but this is it. This is the document that's submitted to state ed. So that's in landscape document. and that's in portrait. Right. Right. Is it? Okay. I'll have to take a look at it. It's in front of you. You ratified that. This. It's in front of you. You ratified that. Anyway, I, you know, there, there's a couple of things that I just want everyone no, it's not. to be aware of. Are you looking at the school budget notice? First of all, I appreciate when anybody ever finds something and brings it to the board's attention, the administration's attention, if we're doing something wrong. That is, that is a good thing we want to encourage. The other side of the coin is we also need to keep in perspective what uh, what any possible mistake, what the magnitude of it is. And so I think sometimes we have a tendency to say a law has been broken or a statute hasn't been followed. And, and, and while technically that may be true, all violations are not treated. Okay, littering is a violation. It can carry, you know, whatever. Okay, but does anybody ever go to jail for that? It's, it's what is the spirit and intent of the law? And here, I think it's clear we complied with the spirit and intent. We didn't uh, apply, comply to the letter of the law by approving. And thank you for bringing that forth, and we're going to fix it. Okay, that's great, John. Okay? Right. And, and, and I just want to say one more time that I have a trail of emails that say, you know, that, hey, did anything happen? Uh, Mary said that she didn't think it had to be approved, but she's checking with the building and uh, well, the, the fine. Hey, wait up, Jen. And then the, yeah. that comes out and I get, well, it's in, the, and it's in the summary report. Well, there's nothing in the summary report. You know, it's like, it's like the, the forthrightness of, hey, man, we messed up, let's fix it. So, so it makes people wonder you know, not just me, but it makes people wonder, what are we doing? Why is it like pulling teeth? Right, I think we brought it to the committee. Right. I mean, to I mean, where? To the committee, I admit it. But the, the I, I understand, but, the, but that's not in the report. Mary, it's not in the report. And you, you brought me to the report again in the emails that read the report. I read the report. It wasn't in there. But I, I think the other thing is, I think the other thing is, and I think we said this in the past, when, okay. when there is something, and again, I don't want to discourage anybody from if somebody comes up with something and feels like, hey, it's our duty. the district should know this. I don't want to discourage that because I think it makes us better. So now Mary knows this. Going forward, we're better. You know, we always get better. Um, but when there is something, especially something like this, well, what I think would be the better way to do it is, you know, we put it on the agenda and say, you think this is wrong. The board wants the administration to look into it. Board gives the administration the order, look into this and report back. Where it gets a little fuzzy is when one board member just says, what's going on with this, look into this. And the administration tries to be accommodating, but as we've always said, no single board member has any more rights than that. Is that what you call accommodating, John? That, that, that not even one word, not one sentence regarding follow-up to me said that, hey, we got it covered, yep, we should have done it, no problem, we got it covered. Not even in the committee report. It went through committee, and nothing was reported, John. That's accommodating? Well, I, 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 think, I think by handling it in the next meeting, in open session like we are now, that's the ultimate accommodation, because it's, it is now on record, on video, we acknowledge, we... And every member of the board is aware And we're all on the same page. Right. Okay, I mean, you know, so I mean, I see emails that go back and forth, and when I'm not up to speed on the side, I'm not going to respond because I'm not sure what's going on. That's why I said, you know, we'll, we'll look into it at the meeting. Because I didn't know where Mary was, I didn't know where Lisa was, I didn't know Excuse where my was. colloquialisms, but what it looks like is a dodge. How is this a dodge? No. What, 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 well, because I asked you, I had to follow up after reading the email, deduce, that, and, I, and I had to write you and say, hey, are we going to approve it at the next meeting? And lo and behold, we are. 
So, so, so I, 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 I guess. I, well, I think, I think when an issue is raised in, and I want to move on from we've got a lot of things, but I think when an issue is raised in between board meetings, and at the very next board meeting is on the agenda and addressed squarely and forthrightly, I don't view that as a dodge. I view that as a process that works. It was an addendum, so it obviously wasn't done. She just talked to the guy yes yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. yesterday. We did. Yeah. You sent an email Thursday on Friday. I, I don't really feel like bothering Mary on the weekend. She was tied up all day since so Sunday. What has personal thing. is the the information has to be verified, and we have to get the answer. Now, I I appreciate that you feel like you found the answer, and but the administration has to do their due diligence and verify. One more so. question. One more question, and I'll I'll leave it alone. Is the minutes of committee meetings under the same mi minutes here. In other words, when something is discussed forthrightly regarding this, isn't that part of the meeting minutes? And why wasn't it in the meeting minutes? It, it, it's, it's right here. What do you mean? It's it. it's in addition, the report due in April yeah. to the State Education Department will be added to, in the future, will be added to the budget resolution in April. But it didn't say anything about that we talked to them, that we're going to Bring it up to the uh, to the uh, to the board for approval, and everything's okay. You got to read into that that we didn't do it, that it should have been done. It doesn't even say. Well, yeah, if you read the first sentence, it says a, that it requires board approval. There, there, and the last sentence says we're going to do it in the future. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and there is a lot of uh, corporate minute keeping, whether it's public, private sector. There are a lot of different theories on, on how to keep. Some people are of the opinion, you know, you put in what Beth said, and Lisa said what Beth said. Others, a full and full, dis a full and fair discussion ensued on motion made. Da -da -da -da. So there is a there is a wide range, all of which are accepted of, of minutes. I think here they're they're striking a balance of giving some color but not giving the whole line. Um, you know, I will defer to the committee's uh, preference on how they want. I mean, the fact of the matter is, the law is about disclosure. Every element of that was disclosed. Right. Okay, it was moving a, on. Again, there's a difference between purposely, oh, you know, not doing something and something that's an oversight. It's obviously an oversight. It's done. Perfect. Period. Move on. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, okay, new business. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. We met on May 28th, it's the same day, thank you. Um, we talked about, as uh, Mr. Fonga mentioned um, earlier tonight, we've been looking at a fact sheet, trying to come up with information to um, report out to parents and everyone in the community, but it's hard when there's moving pieces sort of every day. So we reviewed a fact sheet and we sort of, you know, made some changes in it. Um, we're hoping to get something put together before the end of the school year once, you know, the Senate and everybody decides on what they, what the facts are, really. Um, we're going to put it up on the school web website, send it out, and um, again, we're awaiting additional updates from the New York State Education Department as well as the governor's office. So again, we're trying to put together a fact sheet when we get all the facts. Um, we also reviewed the press release announcing the senior high principal, and um, that is going to be released to media outlets after we go uh, on it. Great, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Seven, new business, A, personnel. One, appointments, A, uh, principal. So, uh, yeah, we're going to table that uh, because uh, that's one of the items I want to discuss in the okay. session. B, elementary teacher. It is recommended that Gina Stagliano is hereby appointed on probation to the elementary tenure area. The service shall begin on September 1st, 2015 and end on August 31st, 2017. The appointee is certified initial in early childhood education, birth through grade two, and childhood education, grades one through six. Ooh. Second. Discussion. Favor. Aye. Opposed. Stay. That's a 6-0. C. Elementary teacher. It is recommended that Jeanette Nichols is hereby appointed on probation to the elementary tenure area. The service shall begin on September 1st, 2015 and end on August 31st, 2016. 
the appointee is certified permanent in childhood education, pre-K through grade six. Second. So she's at Miles right now, right? Correct. But she was permanent. So now she's going to be permanent. No, she's going to be probation. Probation. First year. What's the difference between probation and permanent sub? A permanent sub is generally a placeholder for somebody who could be coming back off from a child rearing oh, okay. And once there's an opening, then we appoint those people to probationary status. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 D, elementary teacher. It is recommended that Erica Kloster is hereby appointed on probation to the elementary tenure area. The service shall begin on September 1st, 2015 and end on August 31st, 2017. The appointee is certified initial in early childhood birth through grade two and childhood education one through six. Moved. She's going into the bidding. She's going into the bidding. All in favor? Aye. It is recommended that Lisa Florence is hereby appointed on probation to the elementary tenure area. The service shall begin on September 1st, 2015 and end on August 31st, 2017. The appointee is certified permanent in pre-K, kindergarten, and grades 1 through 6. Move. Discussion, yes. <clears throat> Again, she's going into the bidding pool. Yes. Because on this educational background experience page, it says she's going to grab the elementary. No, she'll win well, the bid pool. So it's telling what yeah. it says, so I want to make sure she's I going to I can correct that, Paul, on there, because she's okay. going to win. So she could be in any of the elementary buildings. No, it's an access probation in front of the elementary, where it specifically says she's going to grab the Oh. Uh, Oh, here. Yeah. 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 Paul, where did you see that on the sheets? Oh, it's okay, I'll take that off. Okay. Thank you. Yes. 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 English teacher. No. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Opposed, abstain. Still 6 0. F, English teacher. It is recommended that Melissa Cobbe is hereby appointed on probation to the academic tenure area of English. The service shall begin on September 1, 2015, and end on August 31, 2017. The appointee is certified professional in English language arts 7 through 12. Discussion. G, foreign world language teacher. It is recommended that Meredith Doyle is hereby appointed on probation to the tenure area of foreign world language. The service shall begin on September 1st, 2015 and end on August 31st, 2017. The appointee is certified initial in Spanish 7 to 12. Second. Discussion. Favor. Opposed. Abstain. Pass the six zero eight. Science department chair. It is recommended that Andre Parody be reappointed to the position of science department chair, effective July first, two thousand fifteen, through June thirtieth, twenty twenty. Move. Second. Discussion. Favor. Opposed. Abstain. Pass the six zero. I, by the remedial specialist department chair. It is recommended that Carrie Storm be reappointed to the position of library media specialist department chair, effective July 1st, 2015, through June 30th, 2020. Second. Discussion. In favor? Aye. Oh, J, assistant social studies department chair. It is recommended that Tammy Wiley be reappointed to the position of Assistant Social Studies Department Chair, effective July 1st, 2015, through June 30th, 2020. Mm -hmm. There was a second. Discussion. Okay, 
substitute teacher list. It is recommended that the list of uncertified per diem substitute teachers be approved. Boys Soccer, Mark McFarland, Head Varsity, Jill Davies Nelson, Assistant Varsity, Jim Carroll, Head JV, Jason Habrick, Head Modified, Earl Soccer, Frankie Ross, Head Varsity, Richard um, DeBrosia, Assistant Varsity, Mike Kizak, Head JV, Dan Pope, Head Modified, Earl Swimming, Tom Wells, Head Varsity, Kristen Falvo, Assistant Varsity, Lauren Holiday, Volunteer Varsity, Cross Country, Jeremy West, Head Varsity Boys, Andrea Lewis, Head Varsity Girls, Field Hockey, Kelly Reese, Head Varsity, Katie Cook, Assistant Varsity, Cheerleading, Betsy Siniscali, Head Varsity. Second. Discussion. see a letter uh, prior to approving this that it's okay. Uh, I know we made a phone call, but I'd like to see to protect, uh, to protect the board, to protect us, that it's okay to retroactively approve this. So I'd like to table it until we can see a letter that says, hey, we understand that it was an oversight in all the years past, and including last year, and that uh, now it's, uh, it's okay for the board to, uh, to approve it. Board desire to have a table this for a I have a motion to second, Jim. Uh, motion to table uh, table this approval pending uh, written authorization from the city. I'll 
I'll make that motion. Is there a second? There being a second motion fails, so the first motion remains on. So we just go to vote. So we already had a motion and a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Abstain. Okay, it passes 5 1 0. Uh, and I would add board ratification going backwards is a very common board function. So it's not, it's not unusual that a board would say, oh, let's approve and ratify because somebody did something the board is okay with, but it was happened. Yeah, and, and, and I've got no problem with that, and I okay. trust Mary did her job, but at the end of the day, the, the results are, the, yeah. the ramifications are very good. B, certification of annual vote. It is recommended that the statement of inspectors for the May 19, 2015 annual budget vote be accepted. Moved. Second. Second. Discussion. It's all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 6 0. C. Date of reorganization. It is recommended that the Board of Education designate July 7, 2015 for the annual reorganization meeting. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay. Passes 6 0. D. Treasurer's report. It is recommended that the April 30th, 2015 Treasurer's report be accepted. Move. Second. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay. Passes 6 0. D. Revenue and expense reports. It is recommended that the revenue and expense reports for January, February, and March of 2015 be accepted. Move. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That's a 6 0. G. Committee on Preschool Education. Uh, oh, sorry, Pat. Budget transfers. It is recommended that the April 30th, 2015 budget transfers be approved. Move. Discussion. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying? That's a 6 0. Uh, G, Committee on Preschool Special Education. The recommendation from the Committee on Preschool Special Education's meeting of May 8, 2015 is presented for approval. Move. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying? Committee on Special Education. The recommendations from the Committee on Special Education's meetings of May 13, May 15, May 18, and May 19, all of 2015, are presented for approval. There was one change. That's why Betty came out um, a new copy, and it's on the first student. There was a typo under minutes. The first one that you received in the board packet on Friday, the recommendation for the program was incorrect. It listed the DP program, and it should be a general ed with related services starting in the column. That's the correct that she had. Thank you. All in favor? Sorry, I'm not doing well tonight. <laughs> somebody was paying attention. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, 504 committee. The recommendations from the 504 committee's meeting of May 13, 2015 are presented for approval. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Staying. That's the 6 0. 
Eight, out of business. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'd, I'd like to abstain. I'm five, five, four, four. Four. Okay. five, zero, one. Uh, eight, other business, legislative update, ongoing board strategy. I think we've already covered that. Uh, anything else? Anyone? Uh, we have a couple items for executive session. One is to discuss collective negotiations with the Harvard Teachers Association and the employment industry of particular persons. Okay. Do I have a motion? Move. Discussion. In favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay with no in two minutes. You guys are too loud. Show of appreciation. All right. Uh, the time for now. Uh, 10 15. Okay. Uh, Russell Vandal, senior high principal? Yes. Um, it is recommended that Mark Benson be appointed on probation to the administrative tenure area of secondary principal. The probationary term will begin on July 3, 2015, and end on June 30, 2018. The appointee is certified for permanent in the area of school administrator and supervisor. Our motion. Moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the committee for uh, its service uh, in, uh, in searching out uh, a new principal. Um, I'd like to say uh, if, if uh, Mr. Benson is appointed uh, by the board that uh, he has my, my full support. However, um, I believe that um, in, 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 in ways apart from uh, dollar conversation, there are things that boards can do to, to, to identify the worth of individuals in, within their personnel development. And so in the long term, it is my opinion that we are adopting policies inconsistently that, that do not provide for the best uh, personnel development of our administrators, our principals who are on the front lines every day doing a great job. So that's my deal. I want the board to know uh, that that uh, no matter how the vote goes, that uh, that I support the decision as always. Well, I think that I think the committee was. A, I think we had a, the search committee was a cross section of parents and teachers and administrators and board members, and I think we conducted a, a fair and open process, and I think we came out with the uh, the best recommended the best candidate for the position. Thank you both for your comments. Thank you for the committee for the work. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Abstain. Measure passes 6-1. Uh, Anything else? Yes, it's recommended the Board of Education authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute a memorandum of agreement between the superintendent and the New Hartford Teachers Association regarding the percentage index for Latin Club advisorship. Second. Discussion. Yeah, and this is from a 2% to a 3% stipend to be absolutely consistent with, uh, with all clubs out there. Yes. Total dollar value, I think, is four hundred dollars. Four hundred three. Four hundred three. Not every single club is a three percent. Not every single club. Oh, I thought it was. I thought there were. It, 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 it goes to. It, it goes to. Because some clubs are teeny tiny. Some clubs, only need one. some clubs are a lot more. Or okay. So nobody has is, more than three. Okay. So this is consistent with the with amount the of activity other going. Foreign language clubs. And yes. consistent with the activity of the Latin club. And yes. It's, yes. Okay. Yep. All in favor. Aye. Opposed. Passes seven zero. Anything else? Uh, motion for adjournment. Oh, oh wait, no. Oh, sorry. Oh, Next Wednesday we're meeting at five thirty. Yeah, that's workshop. That's, that's mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody whatever you have at home, if Fanny might have sent you, just bring it with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you watch the? Um, I'm going to do it. Okay. No, no, I didn't watch it either. I didn't. I I anybody, either. If anybody watched it, they thought it was worthwhile or what? Yeah, I watched it. I read the book. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, no. I, I wanted to say I forgot. Sorry. Earlier.
really, oh my God, I'm like that commercial. Um, I did have the opportunity to go with uh, my daughter, Jillian's ninth grade class um, on a field trip, really unexpectedly to the, Ro the Black River, um, it's like an environment. Oh yeah, Black River After Education Center. The most incredible thing I have ever yeah. participated in, yeah. and I would say to the staff and curriculum co chair, yeah. that we should be taking advantage of this. Well, we did, they do. There are, well, I guess um, I was talking to Anne's father, and she was just saying that you know they really want to make sure that we expose it because it's completely free to the school. It's, really? it's, fun, yeah. it's funded by some anonymous benefactor. Where there, is I think it? It's up by Boonville. We yeah, NBCC there, has had some camps there up there for the summer. Seven sites or five sites? They do. So what we we were supposed to kayak because it was the day of the thunderstorm. They didn't want the kids out on the water, so we did mountain biking. The equipment is beautiful. It's brand new. The facility is incredible. It was a fantastic day. What's the name? Of it? It's Black River Outdoor Education Program. But the really interesting thing is that at each site they have different curriculums that correspond to the, within the school curriculum. I mean, it it, it was is it really. North? Hmm? Is it north? Yeah, it was yeah. Boonville. Is this Hill? the first time? Potato Hill. It was Potato Hill. That's the old name. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. know. Uh, Sixth yeah. graders are going tomorrow. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. like yeah. incredible yeah. facility. Yeah. And was the running age runners? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was. Age. It was really. I mean, yeah. A lot of classes. Yeah. Class. Yeah. Yeah. The first one we taken advantage of. No. We, we, no, we, we do use it, but I'm just saying, the more that we can avail ourselves yeah. of this, the better it yeah. is, because it is. It's not just a trip. Go here, ride some bikes. I mean, they talked about the different. Um, zones, the different kinds of plants, what was native to the area, the dam, the biking. It was so it was a combination of to you know kind of what we were talking about the other day. Physical fitness with with science, with just it, it, teamwork. It was an incredible experience. Yeah. So I just wanted to give a thumbs up to that. All right. Years ago we took our physical classes there. I was going to say they use it really? also for um, for like yeah, um, athletic team building. Not oh. that years ago. <laughs> and it's it's actually I guess Thanks, free Paul. to any any like community group that's more than twenty five people or something. It, it was incredible. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, that's all I got. You sure? A positive. Cause I want to stay. Listen, anything you guys have. <laughs> I'll just say one thing. Just for, no, just as a, an aside. I don't know if anybody saw the article in the paper the other day, last week about how one school district, how they had a student um, elected as a, a student rep as a member of the board. Yeah. Non-voting. Non-voting. Yeah. Right. yeah. I just think that's something that we should consider. I think that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's good? Do we know it? I have a motion to adjourn. Move. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.